going? This is Dragon. I'm here at the Dragon Cabin. I'm parked outside of Buena Vista, Colorado. I wanted to just make a video giving you uh, kind of an overview of the Dragon Cabin, the features, all that. So I'm just standing outside here. It's pretty cold and windy, but I'll run through the main stuff. Uh, you can see the solar right there. I've got 200 watts of solar. Got the spare tire mounted on the back, uh, so when you lower the ramp, it kind of makes a deck area. I uh, just installed this cell phone booster, so that boosts my uh, 4G LTE signal uh, by like 50 decibels. It makes a huge difference when you're downloading or uploading videos, uh, so that helps me stay connected. You probably noticed the huge storm door window that I uh, welded in. It opens up and it's held open by a tailgate strut, so that's pretty nice on the summer days. I've got a tire boot here so that hopefully nobody steals the Dragon Cabin. That would be devastating. And on the other side, I've actually taken the whole tire off and I just keep it in my car so that I can kind of leave it and just feel good about, you know, nobody driving off with it without a tire on it. I've got my hitch box here. This is a Suncast deck box. And inside there is my heater system, my battery, and my propane tank. I might put a picture up of that real quick. Of course, my beautiful 2006 GX470 that tows this thing all over the country. Uh, and really the only maintenance I've had to do on this trailer, like basic uh, transportation maintenance, has been replacing the leaf springs. I actually broke the leaf springs when I was off-roading one time on a trail I probably shouldn't have been on with this trailer. But, you know, I was there anyways, and you can see I really scraped up the steel on the back. But, you know, these things are built like tanks. You can really handle anything. So, put a new, slightly longer leaf spring on here. On the other side and you see I got those extendable shackles as well so I can lift it another three inches if I felt like it by moving the bolt down but I uh, just heard that a 45 degree angles you know what you should shoot for on your shackles 45 degrees backwards so that the leaf spring has the maximum amount of uh, absorption for shock absorption so just something to keep in mind uh, I've got a little portable bathroom there. I made a video about that. Uh, I've got a motion activated light so that if any animals or any people come up to my door in the middle of the night, it'll uh, illuminate them for me. And uh, I think that's everything I've got out here. I've got one more of these PVC pipes so I can double the height of this antenna if I need to, but. I usually find myself parking pretty high up in the mountains, so it's usually not necessary to get the antenna that high up, just because I've already driven such a high altitude. So let's uh, hop inside here real quick and see what all's going on. Alright, so the first thing you see when you come through the door is this beautiful kitchen. Uh, these counters, I actually cut and finished myself. I had a friend in Oregon mill them for me. Mill, it's a one inch maple. It's a tree he used to hang his hammock on and it's just beautiful wood. I finished it with beeswax, mineral oil, uh, butcher block finish. Got a four burner gas hob. Uh, I've got, you can watch my electrical video if you want like a detailed electrical explanation, but got the stove gas valve on a timer switch. Also controls the fan up here. Got it blocked off so snow doesn't blow in. So it's got nice piezo. I've also used this as a fireplace. You know, if my heater ever goes out, this thing works great. It's about seven and a half kilowatts of heat when all these burners are on. And of course you need to vent it. I've got a CO detector that tells me the carbon monoxide level. A little humidifier as well because if you don't vent the propane, you get a lot of condensation, a lot of moisture, and you get a lot of carbon monoxide really quick. So definitely need to vent that. 
And just right here, if the piezas go out, I've got a lighter. I use a lot of napkins for dishwashing. I've got my camping one liter pot and lid. Got all my utensils here. I don't have a silverware drawer, so I've just got a jar. I put them all in. I've got a tiny little backpacking stove, just in case, uh, you know, worst case. It's nice to still be able to make coffee in the morning if I run out of propane in the middle of the night. Uh, I did the walls with some aluminum flashing, which I thought was a nice uh, kind of finish for that, and it's very easy to clean. So above the sink, you see I've got a lot of stuff hanging. Uh, it just helps to you know, make use of every square or cubic foot of space that you've got. So this just gets a lot of my stuff that I use often within hand reach and just kind of gets it out of the way. So I've got a good skillet, a good three-quart pot, coffee mug, bananas, uh, another pot that I heat hot water in for a hot water bottle, put near my feet when I go to bed at night because it's so cold here in Colorado in February. And a big cast iron skillet I do most of my cooking on, searing steaks and all that. It uh, works really well for me, very easy to clean. I just hang it up there, uh, kind of let it dry to get it off the stove to show you that. Uh, I've got my coffee box here, coffee and tea. So French press, stovetop, coffee maker, thermos, lots of different stuff. A koozie for my beer, some tea, you know, and just some fruit, potatoes and stuff over there. And the sink, so when I'm traveling, I'll put everything in this whole area, pretty much in the sink, uh, just to get it in a place where it's not going to rattle around too much. And so I'll clear this whole counter off when I pack up on Monday and head out of here. I'll pack it all up in the sink. That's one of the reasons I got such a huge sink, is just because it's great for storage, honestly. So... That drain goes to a gray water tank here. It's just a very simple setup. You just empty it, you know, whenever you need to. I use a little bit of this anti-mildew spray in it just to keep it from uh, smelling too funky. And down here you also see my radiator heater. So the hot water heater on the hitch box pumps 50-50 antifreeze in here. It heats it up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the fans blow that heat into the cabin and thermostat keeps it at a nice warm temperature no matter how crazy it gets outside, how much it's snowing and blowing and all that. So I've got my oven mitt, towels, wash rags, little lantern, little clock here to tell the time. Uh, this is kind of a spice rack I put up. I've got a little storage above the sink where this cross beam was. I just put some towels and blankets and stuff up there. Got my fresh water here. So obviously I'm winter camping, so I don't want any pipes with any water in them. So all my water just goes into this tank and I'll pull it over to the sink, you know, if I need to wash my hands or dishes or whatever. But mostly it just stays right here and I'll fill up, you know, whatever I need. Uh, just like that. So that works really well. I just kind of keep some snacks on the counter here. Got a little lantern that I'll stick outside occasionally. On the door here, I've got a bunch of just organizational uh, things. Some building stuff, a carpenter square, a caliper, you know, just all kinds of useful stuff. Scissors, duct tape. Some paracord. I need to put that with the others. I've got a little cover for my thermostat so at night it's not making any light in the cabin. And some gloves, fuses, batteries, basic tools, screwdrivers, and pliers, measuring tapes, uh, a little broom, handle broom, some napkins, ratchet straps, and uh, doggy treats. Uh, over here, I've got uh, something there. I've got uh, my RO filter system with a little pump just packed away for the winter. I drained all the water out of it. Got a nice big fan here. I've got this uh, telescoping ladder. It's like a 12-foot ladder, but it fits 
into just a very small space. Works really well. This is kind of my kitchen drawer with some propane stuff, kitchen knife. And I've got a kind of a tool drawer with a shovel, hammer, a knife, and some maps right there. And this is kind of a spare parts drawer. So I've got spare bearings, batteries, fans, all my instruction manuals for all the appliances down there. And then under the stove, I've kind of got my pantry, got all my snacks, uh, dinner food, just everything packed away in a tote, so it's very easy to keep up with. And then I've got my Coleman fridge. It's a thermoelectric, it doesn't use a whole lot of electricity, but it keeps about a week's worth of stuff. Uh, pretty cold, about 40 degrees. I don't even plug it in right now, as cold as it is. It's uh, really nice. So I've got a little folding chair here. I'll use this quite a lot when I'm just eating dinner or working at the table. And a folding uh, little bedside table thing. You know, I will use that outside. So for all my clothes, I kind of got this organizer. I keep all my warm weather stuff at the top so I could just throw it on as I'm going out the door. And then I've got some spare gloves t-shirts, long sleeves, some pants, long underwear, ski bib, and then uh, this is like dirty laundry. So that's what I'll take to the laundromat about once a month. And under the bed, I've got some more laundry, uh, socks and everything just stored away, pants stored away under my cot. And then just a uh, tote of blankets and some spare camping gear over there. So this is my bed. Uh, it's a basically a sleeping bag that is wrapped around three inch uh, medium density foam and the foam has uh, this cover on it. I used to keep these in my car but it's since I'm camping in this kind of semi-permanently I keep it in here now and it is really comfortable. I have no complaints about that. As long as the trailer's level, works really well. I use my Z-Pax 10 degree sleeping bag and I'll just kind of adjust the insulation for however cold it is inside. But, you know, if my heat fails in the middle of the night and it turns to be 10 degrees inside here, it's good to have a sleeping bag that's rated for that temperature. And uh, above that, I've got the Bose speakers in the ceiling hooked up to my radio here. Just a car stereo, a cheap Bluetooth car stereo. I've kind of got a clothes line hung. I'll hang my hammock across here as well. Uh, you can see it over there. I'll tie it across here so I could just hammock uh, right in the window. It's really nice. I just put up these little shelf supports to hang some lumber and stuff. You know, when I'm not using it, I kind of want to get it out of the way. So I just stick it up there. There's another camp chair, just a very minimal little thing. Yeah, you see all the electrical cables and everything, solar. Again, you can watch my electrical video on my page if you're interested in how all the electrical works. You know, I've got the lights, the radio, big fan, pump, and master switch here. So that's all nice. Got a little inverter so I can charge my laptop and all that. Of course, this massive storm door window is probably the favorite part of this house because, you know, you just park it facing the most beautiful views and you get to change up your backyard, you know, once a week or just whenever you feel like it. You just drive somewhere else, find another free campsite. Got some nice blue curtains for that and a white kind of this is made out of a kind of a polyester scree kind of material and that just kind of makes it look nonchalant you know when you're driving and i got outlets all around here i just put up this table as kind of a kitchen and work table so i'll just sit here with my computer do some youtube work just whatever you know whatever you need a nice spot to sit at for 
I put a little cushion over here. This will actually be my guest bed as well. I'll probably move some of the totes from under this bed and put the other pad where the table is and just have a second bed right by the window. Uh, I've got all my backpacking gear up there hanging on the ramp spring snowshoes and the backpack I used to through hike 5200 miles. I'll tell you this is a whole lot better than a tent. I mean there's been some 50 mile per hour gusts today and this thing barely even budges even with that much wind. I mean a tent would just get devastated by the wind out here. I've got some more hanging organizers over there. This is all pegboard. Obviously so it's very versatile. I uh, keep my jackets hung up here. I've got a little mount for a projector right here. I've got a 50 watt LED projector that I've got stored away right now. And so I'll bring my projector screen down and throw on some music, some uh, movies, you know, whenever I feel like watching some, some action. Things exciting, and uh, I've got my cell phone booster here. Again, that's a 4G booster, so it's boosting band 5, 12, 13, and 17. That's like most of T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon's 4G bands in the 700 megahertz range. This is the little antenna that it uses. It's only a 10 watt, you know, and it's basically in radio frequencies, so I'm not worried at all about any health effects or anything. I mean, this is very just normal radio waves. You get more radiation from stepping out in the sun for like five seconds. So if you want to worry about something, worry about that. Uh, let's see, what else is there in here? I think that's pretty much it as far as a basic uh, tour goes. So I'll just do a few more passes. Show you the whole kitchen. Oh man, it's really fun to cook in this kitchen. You know, everything's just right within your reach. It makes cooking delicious food very easy. And over here, the whole bedroom, sitting, dining area. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour. And you know, if you ever see me out on the trails, come and say hey. Love to share a beer with you or a joint or whatever your vice of choice is. And yeah, just stay creative out there. I uh, hope you maybe learned something from this video, got some ideas about your own camper conversion, about living a nomadic lifestyle. And as always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.